It should be no secret by now just how much I depend on live foods to breed and raise fish. I use several varieties, but honestly, brine shrimp and paramecium are the only two that I would consider truly essential. It's paramecium that I want to focus on today. Let me start by telling you a little secret. As much as I like having live foods available, I hate maintaining the cultures. I know, I can feel your shock, but it's true. I hate it. I hate maintaining a culture that I don't always need, that I'm just keeping alive for when I might need it down the road. That's paramecium for me. What I want to show you is this. A special container style I cooked up to help take some of the tedium out of maintaining cultures. I'll start with why. The most important part of this container is the plastic basket embedded in the lid. This holds the food source for the culture. In combination with a piece of soft plastic mesh, this allows me to swap in fresh food quickly and with little mess. That single element takes most of the work out of maintaining a culture. Suspending the food source near the water's surface also causes the bulk of the live population to concentrate there, making them easy to harvest with a pipette. This round stopper made of coarse foam keeps pests like fruit flies or midge flies from contaminating the culture. Just take my word that you don't want that. So that's the purpose of this contraption. Now let's make one. This should be a quick DIY project, and for it you might use a plastic container with a lid, a two-inch net pot stolen from your half-dead java fern, a patch of thin plastic mesh, and a sheet of foam. For tools, I use a drill with a two-inch hole saw, a knife to clean up edges, and a hot glue gun. If you don't have all these, I'm sure you'll see that there are plenty of materials you can substitute. First, I'm going to drill a small pilot hole in the lid of the container. It has a little divot in the center that makes this easy. I bet something like a peanut butter jar might have this too. If you do this, I would like you to be at least 30 to 40% safer than I am when using tools. Please. Next, I'll switch to the hole saw and slowly, carefully cut a two inch hole in the center of the lid. Emphasis on slowly here. If you push too hard, you'll crack the lid instead of cutting it. Now we'll use this hobby knife to trim away any rough edges left over from the cut. Good enough for government work. With the hole cut, the net pot should seat comfortably into the lid. And here's where the hot glue comes in. On the underside of the lip of the net pot, I'll lay down a thin bead of hot glue. This I think is optional, but it's a nice touch to help everything hold together. After all the cuts and gluing, I'll wash out the container and bring it back filled with dechlorinated water. Again, this net pot is where I'll hold a food source for the paramecium. I like to use boiled wheat kernels because they break down slowly in water and can keep a culture going for weeks or even months without maintenance. There are many alternative food sources, so use whatever you prefer. I wrap the food source in the piece of soft mesh and dunk it in the water. This is so much easier than trying to remove old and add new food without scrapping the whole thing and starting over, as I might otherwise be inclined to do. Now I'll add a starter group of paramecium. This is a sample taken from a population that I've been maintaining for about three years. If you're looking for a starter culture, I bought mine originally from a company in the U.S. called Carolina Biological Supply. I also see them at fish club auctions fairly often. But if you're offended by the thought of paying for something that you might possibly obtain for free, you can try isolating a culture from an established aquarium or wishing one into existence with the power of positive thinking. Whatever you want to do. Over the next week or so, this small starting population will bloom into a thriving colony with culture and history and maybe a primitive system of parliament. That's when you'll know that they're ready to be fish food. The last thing I want to do is make some kind of breathable covering to keep the pests out. This is where the foam comes in. I'm going to take the same hole saw and use it to cut a plug of foam to cover the opening on top of the culture. If you've ever tried this before, you might have found that the coarse teeth on a hole saw like this don't play nice with foam. What I've found is, if I run the drill in reverse, the teeth will cut foam smoothly. Hopefully that's true for you too. Worst case scenario, you might just have to do this by hand, and end up with something a little rougher cut. In my case, the resulting plug will fit perfectly into the net pot while still allowing for air exchange to sustain the culture. So let's take a look about a week later. The population has grown quite a bit, and over time it will just become more and more dense. As the wheat breaks down, the water becomes cloudy. 
The microorganisms that make up some of that cloudiness are consumed by the paramecium, and at some point, the water will clarify, and the population of paramecium will start to dwindle. That's when you want to add a fresh food source to keep them going. I like steady growth and slow decline better than a boom and a crash, and this works for me. The size of this culture is fairly small, but they're easy to scale. I have a much larger version if I ever need it, but most of the time the small containers work just fine for me. So that's about it. That's my container and my process. If you're culturing paramecium, just take a moment to acknowledge that you're a giant nerd, and that's awesome. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.